Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Pre-Market News and Views by Money Stocks. Today is Friday, November 15, 2013. Thank you all for tuning in. We're going to jump right into the charts here with the S&P 500 E-mini futures. You'll see that the futures are trading higher by about three points to 1790 spot 75 per contract. So decent little uh, uptick here uh, before the opening bell. Today is a Friday. Generally, we look for lighter volume after the first couple of hours, and that always... Uh, gives the market that slight upside bias. Normally on Fridays, we look for a flat to slightly positive trading day because of what we call the Friday effect. Normally, after the first few hours, the volume will get very, very light, and the market will just go sideways. Then at the end of the day, the institutional money usually comes in with a buy program just to give it a positive close into the weekend. So we normally see that. We've been accustomed to seeing that. I'm not sure if we'll get that exactly today, but we have to be on guard for it because that's normally what we see. But uh, nonetheless, markets have been soaring and roaring and, and really just every single day, every dip has been being bought. Yesterday was the Janet Yellen testimony where she basically came out and said, hey, I'm going to keep printing money as much as we want. And uh, that gave the market more reassurance that there's going to be more money flow into the system. And she just inflated basically the stock market even higher. So again, nothing has really changed. Uh, Janet Yellen looks a lot like Ben Bernanke. And um, nothing more than what we expected already. But either way, the futures are trading uh, higher by about three points this morning. Now, looking across the pond in Europe and Asia, Asia had a big night last night. Asia was soaring and roaring, sharply higher really across the board. So when we look at the Asian markets last night, um, there were really nothing uh, wrong there. China, uh, Japan was up. China was up. China came out with some new rule changes. For their country, they're going to allow two children to be born instead of one. Uh, gave the Chinese market a big lift. So Asian markets really higher across the board. European markets also are higher across the board as well, with the exception of Italy. Italy is down a little bit, but I don't know if we can make all that much out of it. Um, looking at a few stocks here today, we do have some stocks in motion. Not a lot of big movers, though, but one stock is Applied Materials. Uh, AMAT is trading uh, at 1761 right now it closed at 1776 yesterday I don't know if we can make a whole lot out of it but um, it will be in play this morning at least initially so uh, you know traders want to keep that on the radar I believe that the stock the company reported earnings again it, there's a lot of shares outstanding it's not a big mover but um, it could be good for some small potential scalps. Another one that is moving today is Agilent. I think this is off of numbers as well. Stock closed at 50.50. It's trading at 53.50 now. So decent pop up here. But there is some resistance right in this area. So be careful with Agilent, okay? Right in this, uh, basically right around $50 and uh, $53.50. You can see there should be a fair amount of resistance. It's not a short trade um, just because of the overall market conditions. But... Um, it could give us some scalps today, so we want to keep it on the radar. Nordstrom's another one. Uh, JWN is the ticker symbol there. Everybody knows this uh, this big retail uh, store. My wife knows it very, very well. Um, again, this one is very, very overbought. The stock right now is trading off of yesterday's highs, which were around uh, 63.40, 63.50. Today, it's trading at 63.11. But it will be probably good for some scalping opportunities throughout the trading day. FedEx is another one. I wouldn't touch FedEx with a 10-foot pole here at these levels. But the stock is getting a little bit of a bid today. It's up decently. It closed at 136.44. It's up to 137.90. This is all on the back of some F-13 filings uh, by George Soros and a bunch of other big hedge fund whales. Uh, basically, they've all bought into FedEx, um, but now the news is being released to you through these 13F filings. Will they be selling FedEx? That's the million-dollar question. So I'm sure they bought in at much, much lower levels, um, <clears throat> but now... Do, are they going to start to flip out of FedEx so while the public gets into it? So you want to really be careful with FedEx. The stock is still in a very, very good uptrend, but it is getting very, very extended now. So I'd be very, very careful with FedEx. A lot of resistance around the 140 level. I'd love to say shorted, but I don't know uh, the conditions warrant a short at this stage of the game. But uh, nonetheless, I would not be a buyer of FedEx up here at these levels just simply because... The 13F filings are coming out now, but the stock has had such an amazing run. If you just take a look at a daily chart, you'll see this thing has just been on a tear. Here is where there's some distribution did come into the stock. 
Now it's getting pushed up to a new high. But you got to be careful when you're watching an equity like this simply for the fact that um, when the news is out that these big hedge funds are involved in it, you know, they, they were involved down here at 115. They're not getting in. They're not buying new shares up here at 137. So don't kid yourself. Um, FedEx may have a little bit more upside, but it should be very, very limited from here. Um, the banks are in play today as well. We got a lot of bank stocks. It looks like Moody's, which I believe Warren Buffett owns Moody's, uh, downgraded um, several banks today. So you want to watch stocks like uh, JPM, JP Morgan, I believe was downgraded, uh, Morgan Stanley. I believe was downgraded as well in Goldman Sachs. But note that uh, Bank of America was not downgraded. So that find out a little bit peculiar. But nonetheless, Bank of America, Citigroup, and Wells, uh, Wells Fargo were not downgraded. I think Warren Buffett has a stake in two out of three of those. Talk about conflict of interest. But either way, um, maybe, maybe there'll be some ill effect on J.P. Morgan or Goldman Sachs, but I don't think that that really is going to affect it all that much, uh, a Moody's downgrade. I think most people don't even really have much faith in these credit agencies any longer, so um, just want to share that with you. All right, let's take a look at oil and gold this morning. If we take a look at oil this morning, we're going to see that um, light sweet crude, the crude that we use here in the United States, is up 35 cents to 94.12 a barrel. So let's go to the all-important USO, which is a good proxy for light sweet crude, and that is trading at 34.02 at the moment. Gold this morning is trading down a little bit, so you do have gold down about 90 cents. Not a big deal. Yesterday, the GLD really had a nice move on the back of the Janet Yellen comments, so really holding firm today. Closed at 124. The GLD closed at 124.27. Today, it's trading at 124.10 so not that big a deal gold should have a fair amount of support here at these levels so we'll see how this all plays out we also want to keep an eye on the US dollar index which is trading a little bit lower today if the dollar goes down that should be beneficial to gold and uh, we'll see how that all shakes out and plays out going forward but with that said everybody just be prepared for a light volume trading session unless something changes we get any fear in this market um, normally I was thinking that today was a good day for a little downslide but um, right now, I'm just not seeing volume in this market. Without volume, the market always has a chance to stay buoyant to flat. So respect the volume trends when you see them. With that said, everybody, have a great trading day, and we will see you on the charts. Take care now.